We were talking about how all the years go. Hi, welcome today to Granny Moe's Art Art Studio. Why Art Art Studio? Because my grandson named this because I mainly paint pet portraits and wildlife art. If you want to see any further information, then look at the bottom of the screen and you will see my website www.moleeanimalart.com or if you want to get in touch with me, info at moleeanimalart.com. People get a little bit strung up about which paintbrushes to use for wildlife art. Well today I'm actually going to go through a few of the brushes that I use. The first brushes, really inexpensive, large brushes for blocking in. If you've got large areas such as this, water, or sky, really good. Really cheap brush from any art store. It's a graduate brush, large, soft, really nice. Or if you want some that are even cheaper, if you go to your local DIY store, you can get some really good paint brushes that are really good for blocking in. Make sure that they're not the sort where the bristles will come out. So what kind of brushes to use? Well brushes are quite personal. You'll find a, a type of brush that you find really good and I've used several types and I mainly work in oil paints or acrylics so that's something you've got to consider when you're buying your brushes. No point buying watercolour brushes if you're going to use oil. I've used all kinds of different brushes and I've got the hog bristle, bristle brushes which are really hard wearing but they're really not suitable for my style of painting and uh, for wildlife. I have tried the synthetic mongoose brushes. Yes folks, they're really called synthetic mongoose. They're lovely soft brushes. You can get them off the internet. Really soft, last a long time, wash really well, but they are a little bit expensive. One type of brush that I found now, I really, really like for wildlife, life for wildlife sorry and that I'm sticking to is the brushes I get from rosemaryandco.com they um, sell globally as well they deliver globally so there's no problem in getting them and here they are these are the long handle brushes this is one they've just recently started to do it's a goat hair mop and this is fabulous for blending just brushing away some of the paint really good brush. I've not had this very long but I really like it. I have some angled brushes which are really good if you're going to be doing some fine details, some grasses where you want a sharp edge and I have the three, uh, four different sizes of them. The nice big ones for blocking in, for blocking in smaller areas, not like the big ones we were talking but with this I would actually block in along the heron there. Really, really good. Combs. I don't use combs really for feathers, but some people like to. They're the ones where they've got a comb edge. I'll show you this in closer detail um, at the end of um, when I've shown you what brushes I use. And then I have the smaller ones, the little flat edges for doing fine feathers. I can actually do feathers with these quite easily and different sizes. The round ones, which again are useful for if you're going to do eyes or anything like that. So these are my collection of rosemaryandco.com. I've also had a new delivery, so I'm going to go through the delivery, how they actually come delivered to your door. This is the delivery I've just had from Rosemary & Co. Um, I have opened the sides, so let's take a look what's inside. Always comes really nicely packaged and delivery is really good. Two or three days and it's always here. You never have to wait very long. One of the nice things is they always send you a thank you, which I think is really nice. They've also sent me, because I'm promoting Rosemary & Co, They've also sent me a few extras, so this is quite exciting because I don't know what they've sent. 
There's always a little catalogue. You can say you don't want the catalogue if you've already had the previous ones, but it's really good. And there's a really good thing in the middle of this book with some of the brushes and some of the brush marks they make. Really interesting. There's all sorts of good tips in that. Right, so let's have a look. One of the brushes that I use a lot and are absolute must for wildlife art are the Vigor brushes. They don't last an awful long time because obviously because they're so fine, but for doing whiskers, hair, they're absolute must. And I have some here which I've already used and I usually have the naught, um, the two, but I never usually go above the four. I always have the smaller sizes. But a fabulous little rigger brush and really nice from Rosemary & Co. I've tried lots and I really like these. Right, these are round brushes. They're not brushes I've, I've used an awful lot in the past, but I know I really like them. I don't go for the really big sizes. These are sort of from the two, the three, the four and the six, but really useful for doing spotting or some fine detail work. Really nice collection to have. Again, all these brushes are not very expensive. They can be as cheap or as expensive as you want, but these are usually just a few pounds. Rosemary & Co have sent me, because I'm promoting them on a video, they've sent me some free brushes. They've sent me a little mop, a comb, and a smooshing brush. And if you look in their catalogue, the smooshing brush is a new brush that they've just, um, so I think it's for blending and, and dry brushing. So these are the brushes I use. If you'd like more details of anything I use or my website, then please look on moleanimalart.com. And my next tutorial is going to be about how to make an art studio from a very small space. And if you like what you've seen, get in touch with me or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. We were talking about how all the